Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. Um, today we'll be looking at the book of Amos, um, the prophet Amos, in the Old Testament as we continue our series here uh, going through the Bible. So please open your Bibles and turn to the book of Amos, that is chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. Amos, chapter 5. 14 to 15. And here we read. <clears throat> Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper, just as you have claimed. Hate evil and love what is good. Turn your courts into true halls of justice. Perhaps even yet the Lord God of heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnant of his people. God bless you in his word. Turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. So the background here is the um, one of the minor prophets, Amos, is a prophet from Judah, and he's warning the Israelites um, during a time of unusual economic and political strength, right? There are not many times in the Old Testament um, when that happened. Of course, one of them is, as we recall, is uh, during King Solomon's time and uh, even earlier in King David's time. Um, however, um, this is a very unusual um, uh, time, moment in time, where they have, where people are uh, enjoying peace and prosperity and economic and political strength. So... What's happening here is in this in this passage we just read is Amos is calling the people to truly honor God and stop pretending. So they're doing uh, half-hearted uh, religious observance, um, basically empty rituals, right? But they're not. They pretend to honor God, but they're not. And so uh, uh, Amos is then prophesying here in Israel uh, against this uh, behavior, and uh, that's around. 760 BC. Um, note that, uh, as far as we know, Amos is the earliest uh, prophetic book, right? We we um, we have, remember we talked about the major prophets and minor prophets, but Amos is the um, is uh, as far as we know the earliest prophetic book. So um, just just as a footnote note here, um, so the context here is false religion and false prophets who are leading the people astray and leading them to commit injustice. So we can get that from the um, opening pass from our passage today too. So the topic is, um, <clears throat> this is this is the God-given call to turn to the Lord, to turn to the Lord. That's the title of our message, turn to the Lord. And why? As we read in verse 14, that you may live. That means following God, that is Jesus, is life, right? We follow, follow our Lord Jesus Christ, and um, by doing so, we're walking. He is walking with us, and um, we're um, already in, uh, enjoying, uh, so to say, and engaging um, the eternal life uh, in the here and now, right? It's not when we die that we... Right, well, we're eternally totally joined with Jesus. That's true and and saved, but it's already in the here and now, and that's a big one. This is a big one, because we have the Holy Spirit um, uh, dwelling in our hearts. Those who believe in Jesus Christ and follow Jesus, not those who say they do, but those who truly do, and so um, this is our call to repent. As we read in Luke. 531 to 32. Jesus, Jesus says, Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. God bless the reading of this word. So that's the call to repent and <clears throat> along with a heart bent towards God, uh, we see in verse 15 comes practicing justice. Again, it's the same call um, that God gives us uh, then as it is now. 
And um, God promises that, that he will have mercy um, on the remnant. Uh, the remnant is <coughs> believers, right? God-fearing people who turn and trust to him. Um, at a later time, um, all people will experience God's justice. So um, <clears throat> in any which way and form. So we have to be aware of that. When Jesus Christ returns the second time, um, whenever that is, the Bible doesn't tell us, we don't know, we're not supposed to know, um, everything will come to light. So that's a big one. So we want to, um, not all people who say, as I said, who follow Christ are his followers. And Jesus warns us about this in Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 23. So if you want to turn to um, to the Bible, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, and read along, all right? It's about true disciples here. <clears throat> and Jesus says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter on Judgment Day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. With all the very obvious words. It's a very important um, verse here. And um, so just for us as believers to be aware of that, Right? We can't see people's hearts, but we can just go by what people, uh, not just what people say, but especially what people do or not do, um, and then see, you know, by their fruits, we were able to recognize them, right? Who are, who are true followers or who are followers of Jesus, and those, um, as Jesus warns us, um, some who are not. And uh, so we have to pray for people who... Um, who claim they are following Jesus, but they're not. So what does turning to the Lord mean for you? It means um, that God commands us um, to turn away from evil, any form of evil. So sin, idols, worldly enticements, um, oh gosh, any form of evil, anything that is not of God, that does not honor our Lord Jesus Christ and is not from our Lord Jesus Christ is evil. evil by default, right? There's no neutral, or perhaps, or maybe, it either either uh, something or someone points to the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ, or it doesn't. So uh, on this note here, um, the um, um, the writer of Acts, that is, Luke, um, that is Luke, writes in Acts 3, verse 19, Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. I read it again. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Again, a call to repentance and God also commands us to do good. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17, we read, Learn to do good. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the cause of orphans. Fight for the rights of widows. So um, <clears throat> that's one of, uh, one of the things we're called to do, to look after those um, who are in need, especially those in spiritual need, um, as good shepherds, not hired hands. And um, along those lines, God also commands us, as we read, uh, to hate evil and love what is good. God commands us to hate evil and love what is good. So in Romans 12, verse 9, we read, Paul writes, Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. God bless the reading of his word. So our, our, our duty and our calling is, as believers of Christ, not to pretend to love other people, but really, really to love them in a way right, that honors God. That doesn't mean that we tolerate people um, or that we associate with evil. Um, but we um, but we pray for people who um, you know who, who need who are in need of repentance as we all are, 
and that's our calling and duty too. So the big one, very important. Um, uh, this, this call to repentance, we cannot do this in our own strength apart from God. We cannot do this in our own strength apart from God. It's a big one. However, God promises God will help us as Christians. God promises this. Let's go back to our initial verse in Amos. Amos 5 verse 14. Do what is good and run from evil, so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper, just as you have claimed. God bless the reading of his word. So here we have the promise that um, God, as we turn to the Lord, our Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ, he will help us um, because we can't do anything on our own strength. And uh, that is an encouragement and blessing here we find here in the book of Amos. May God bless you and keep you.